All right, guys. So we have a great, or well, a good static mix going. And this next, these next couple of videos, we're gonna be working through some of the mistakes that we talked about earlier in the course. But we're gonna be looking at it from an active mixing perspective, not retroactive. Like if this is what you've done, this is how you can correct it. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna side chain a bunch of things. And this works in so many genres of music. It works in pop, hip hop, R and B, EDM. It works with pretty much anything. So the values that you're going to be dialing in in the specific plugins like the compress the compressor and all that will be a little bit different based on the compressor that you're using as well as your genre. But these ideas will translate to pretty much every genre of music. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to side chain some things away from the kick and snare because first thing I want to do with compression when I start to compress in stages, which will be the next video, is I want to throw some compression on my drums and a drum bus. Well, to do that, I want to make sure that I have everything out of the way and it's not fighting. So we've already done that with the frequencies with a lot of the instruments. For instance, this little gated sound. We took a lot of the lows out from about 200 hertz down. Well, this sound will fight with the snare in frequency. So what I want to do is set up some sidechain compression so it ducks the volume of that purple track, that little gated sound, every time the kick and the snare hits, because then I'm going to be able to get more life out of the kick and snare. Now, just as a quick side note here, our goal at the end of this video is to increase the RMS by about two, we want to go up to around negative, hopefully around negative 13 and a half, negative 14. We're at negative 15.9 right now, I think. I've lost the light your eyes. Okay, so it's at negative 16. Now I want to get this to around probably negative 14 and a half just by doing some sidechain compression, which will allow me to turn up my overall volume of some tracks in a little bit more of an efficient manner. So let's start doing that right now. Now I'm going to go to this ARP and I'm going to, or this gated sound. I'm going to pull up Logic Pro's compressor. You can use any compressor that you like that has a sidechain input. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate via the sidechain input up here, and it's usually at the top of the plugin. I'm going to select the sidechain input to be the track that my kick is on, and it needs to be audio. What, what that's going to do is the compressor is only going to be active and on every time this blue blob, the kick audio, occurs. And I'm going to turn my ratio up and turn my attack up a little. So see that meter? Every time the kick hits, the volume of that purple track is going down. Okay, now the ratio, I don't want super high. If I slam the ratio, right? And you can hear with quick release time, it'll be more with the kick. But I think uh, short release times are kind of unnatural and I'm not gonna do a super high ratio on this. I usually go from negative five to negative 10 reduction. All right, that works. So now let's do that same thing here. We're going to load up another instance of the compressor here. And I'll go to a different algorithm in the compressor. Let's go to the Studio VCA. And we're going to select the water drop snare. And it's right here. And the reason I'm doing that is because a lot of people don't realize this, maybe you've never had this thought. A lot of people will use sidechain to clear out frequencies and space in the mix for your low end elements like basses, kicks, and subs. Well, you can do it with anything. You can actually have two instances of sidechain compression on the same track. So it gets really interesting when you do that. So I want this purple track now to get out of the way a little bit. When the snare hits. So I've selected my sidechain. I'm going to turn the ratio up. Okay, now I'm not trying to have a lot of a gain on this, just a little bit, because I don't want it pumping too much. So now if we play that track with the kick and snare. It's going to be out of the way of the kick and snare in the mix a little bit better. Now let's drag that track down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same thing with this sound. 
And be, I'm putting those two tracks next to each other because I want them out of the way, the kick and the snare. So I'm just going to copy and paste these this compressor over. So you can see here that this is the track we just did with the two compressors. I'm going to copy and over, copy and paste it over to a few other instruments here. And I'm going to want the sausage fattener occurring last on these sounds. All right, so let's try that. Let's listen to these two. Now, when they when we solo these. It's not going to be much of a difference in terms of volume, but let's play both of those with the kick and snare. I've lost a life within your eyes. I come you down, let it shine. I see a shadow, it's all I know. I've lost a life. Okay, and if you're wondering why I'm taking so much time to do this, because if you get close to peak levels because you're trying to get your kick and your snare, though those are some of those peak transient rich elements of any mix, this is help, gonna help me allow me to get the volume better so I'm not as close to peaking and clipping with those transient rich sounds because they're getting out of the way in my mix. Now and we need to do I've lost a life with you. So I think the kick and the, the acoustic guitar, I don't want to move out of the way, but we could probably throw on the compressor to get a little bit of the kick, I mean the guitar out of the way of the snare. So let's do that. We're going to go to the compressor and we're going to do, let's do the studio FET for this. We're going to go to the water drop snare, which is right here. And let's play. I've lost a light within your eyes I come you down, let it shine I see a shadow, it's all I know I've lost a light I'm going to pan that back out to the left now to about negative, or probably about negative 25, negative 30 degrees I've lost a light within your eyes I come you down and this one. I've lost a light within your eyes. I come. All right, so there are some things that we're side chaining out of the way, which is really going to help clean up the mix. Now, we already side chained the bass in an earlier video to the kick. We already have done that. Turn down the amount though. Like I said, like I like personally like negative five to negative ten, and that will change on the genre. If it's more of a relaxed genre, it'll be closer to negative five. Right now with this section, the kick is so filtered, it's so low. So say we like a sound say we that I don't think it's going to really matter. So that's something that you could stylistically kind of side chain out of the way if you wanted to make more room. But I don't know if it really needs to in that instance. All right, so let's go back to the beginning of this and bring the vocal back in, and let's see what we have going on with. I've lost a light within your eyes. I come you down, let it shine. I see sh Okay, so now, doesn't it seem like my snares are a little bit loud? Well, that's because I ducked things out of the way of the snares, so I can actually turn that down, thus reducing my peak volume. I've lost a light within your eyes. 
come you don't let it shine I see a shadow, it's all I know Tell me now, where did you go? This is your life, this is your world Alright, so I was peeking in this first half right before I turned the snare and the kick down a little. I have lost a life. I like negative 1.8. So I just basically got two decibels of peak volume back in my mix. So now what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight everything. I'm gonna open up my mixer and I'm gonna go to a track and we'll just take this to the uh, kick track right here. Or this let's see which one this is up here. The sub boom sample. I'm going to turn it up by two decibels because I just gave myself about two decibels of headroom. So let's do two decibels. Eyes, I now I should not be clipping. All right, so I'm just turning up the volume of the individual elements a little bit more. Okay, so remember at the beginning of the video, I said that I wanted to be able to get my RMS value up by maybe about negative to about negative 14 and a half because we were at around negative 16. Let's turn on span and let's look. Now, if you're wondering why this is hopefully gonna work is because we ducked things out of the way of the kick and snare we did we got pretty much everything this bass is out of the way of the of the kick the arp and this little these little backwards reverse sounds are getting out of the way of the kick this guitar is getting out of the way of the snare now and we cut out all the frequency so everything's fitting together well by by getting them out of the way it allows us to turn our kick and our snare down because we'll be, we won't be struggling to hear it which gives us more peak volume so then I turned down the uh, kick and snare, and then I saw how much peak volume I got because I was peaking at about negative one point six in this section that's that's marked with this orange marker up here, the loop point, and I turned it down, and then I was peaking at around negative three point six. So I knew I could turn my whole mix up by about two decibels, which is going to increase my RMS. So that being said, here's the big moment. Let's check out the RMS. I've lost a life. All right, so it's even better than negative 14 half. I got to about negative 14. At some points, it was negative 13.7. So I just improved the loudness of my mix by side chaining things out of the way. So that sums up this video. The next video, we're going to be looking at starting to compress in stages, and we're going to be compressing a bunch of different things. Ultimately, we're going to try to get our RMS value a little bit better. And then we're going to move to the final section of the mix where we're going to be throwing on some master chain stuff that you see that's grayed out over here. I'll see you there.